What's up guys, Scotty2Hockey here, aka The Average Hockey Fan once again, and before I say anything, I would first like to say, we the North, let's go Raptors, take that title home in Game 6, but this video is back to the hockey talk. There's a very juicy rumor going around involving the Montreal Canadiens and Philadelphia Flyers for a potential trade that Montreal is trying to pull out for Shane Goss' pair, and the, the names involved in the trade are Andrew Shaw and Paul Barr, and so those are the names that could potentially go into uh, the Philadelphia Flyers for a Shane Gossespear trade. Now, as for Shane Gossespear, he had a phenomenal rookie year, one of the best offensive rookie years for a defender in uh, years. He broke the rookie point scoring record. Uh, the pokey, I believe it was 12 straight games he had points in, and he had four overtime goals in a year, the most ever by an NHL rookie. Absolute dynamo as a rookie. Had 65 points the year before last. This year had kind of a down year coming off an injury, but in the last 20 games of the season, really found his game and really looked like the gospel spirit of old. So this guy brings a lot that the Montreal Canadiens could need. He plays on the left side, power play specialist, only 26 years old with a very appealing contract. So he's everything the Montreal Canadiens could use. Shane Gossespierre, a.k.a. Ghost, that's his nickname. Ghost broke into the league as one of the hottest young offensive-minded defensive rookies in four in years. In 2016, he broke a rookie point scoring record by scoring points in 15 games straight, and it only took 12 to break the record. He also tacked on points in three more games after that. Then he became the first rookie D-man in NHL history to record four overtime goals in a single season. He had such a good rookie campaign, he finished second in Calder votes. The smooth skating left-handed defenseman has been nothing short of superb three out of his four full seasons in the NHL. This, however, this year, however, coming off an injury, he had a poor year by his standards. Despite looking like a player who had gotten back on track in the last 20 games of the year, it is now being rumored Ghost may be getting traded out of Philadelphia. This would be a great move if the Montreal Canadiens could swing this trade and could pull off a trade bringing him to Montreal. He's a great fit. He brings everything we need, and he's an excellent top four left-handed defenseman, could solidify the top two defenders on the left side along with Mete. He's a good fit to play with either Weber or Petrie. He's a big threat on the power play and should be good for upwards of 40 to 60 points this year if he can stay healthy. He had 37 points last year, and that was a down year by his standards. 65 points a year prior to that. Um, excellent, excellent offensive totals for sure. He does have some holes defense. Uh, he does have some holes on the defensive end. But a veteran D-man like Shea Weber and an excellent defensive coach like Luke Richardson and an excellent defensive-minded head coach like Claude Julien could really help this guy shore up his all-around game. He could be a superstar D-man in Montreal who could one day win a Norris Trophy. A player like this on the left side is something the Habs could truly benefit from. Not to mention he has a good term, good dollar value, excellent cap hit. Let's hope the Habs pull this trade off. It would be an excellent pickup for the Montreal Canadiens. His cap hit is only $4.5 million with a nice long term on it, signed up until 2022, 2023. He's only 26 years old. He's 5'11, 180 pounds, so a bit on the smaller side. So fans who are looking for a big, strong, defensive minded defenseman aren't going to want Montreal to uh, go after Goss Spirit. Completely makes sense if that's what you're looking for. His position is left handed defense, and he was born in Margate, Margate Florida. Last year, he had a down year by his standards. He only had nine goals and 78 games played. The goal with 28 assists, good for 37 points. He was a minus 20, so like I say, he does need to shore up some holes on the defensive end. But some of that comes from this guy when he gets frustrated. He takes dumb penalties too. Not a lot, but there are games where you can see he's having a bad game on the defensive end. He'll get frustrated. He'll slash. He'll hook a player. He'll give up on a play, and instead of going for their body, he'll stick his stick in between their skates and trip him. Doesn't happen a lot, but it, it, he is known for doing that some games. Um, and he had 37 points last year, but out of those 37 points, 14 of them were power play points with 4 power play goals, 10 power play assists. He had 5% shooting, 102 blocks, 46 hits. He averaged 19 minutes and 40 seconds played per game. In his career, he has great numbers. In 298 games played, he has 46 goals, 147, 141 assists, excuse me, 187 points. He was a minus 25, so he's a career minus player. He does have his holes on the defensive end for sure, but I believe Luke Richardson could really, really help him with that, kind of like he did with Victor, Met Victor Mete. He has 21 power play goals, 71 power play assists, good for 92 power play points. He has a career 6.1 shooting percentage, 372 blocks, 169 hits, 
and he's averaged 20 minutes and 9 seconds per game throughout his career. So really, really good offensive uh, totals. Not bad in the block shots area. Could hit a bit more, could be a bit more physical, and he does need to shore up his defensive flaws. But I really believe Montreal is the place for him to do that. We, they have excellent coaching staff when it comes to defense. They have Claude Julien, who is known for, known for putting together good defensive cores, known for making defensive cores strong. Luke Richardson, who's an excellent defensive coach, and a mentor like Shea Weber. We, we've seen what Roman Yossi's like in uh, Nashville playing next to Shea Weber. We've seen what Victor Mete has become playing next to Shea Weber. I can only imagine how good Shane Gossespierre would be playing next to Shea Weber. Now, potential trades I have going out for Shane Gossespierre. My very first trade, I'm, I would like to see the Montreal Canadiens try and snag rate Nate Ratcliffe with a two, a very promising prospect out of the OHL, who I believe will transition to the NHL, be at least a 20-25 goal scorer, has uh, chemistry with Nick Suzuki, has played with Nick Suzuki, went all the way to the OHL final, won it all, went all the way to Memorial Cup, almost made it to the final, was a big part of their run along with Suzuki and Char. So... Definitely, definitely a good prospect the Montreal Canadiens could try and swing with that trade too. So the first trade, I had Andrew Shaw, Paul Byron, a second round pick, a Columbus a second round pick from this year that Montreal owns. Next year, a second round pick, Montreal second round pick, and a fifth uh, round pick for Shane Gossespierre and Nate Ratcliffe. Now whether or not the Philadelphia Flyers would do that, probably not. They, Montreal would probably just end up trading Shaw and Byron straight up for Gossespierre or something like that, but they should try and also get Nate Ratcliffe. They'd be throwing in two second round picks and a fifth round pick. Philadelphia may go after that and may trade Ratcliffe for it. Who knows? You never know what you could get. It's at least worth, at least worth a shot. Now the second pick is just, the second trade I have is just for Gossespierre. I have Andrew Shaw, uh, a gritty prototypical Philadelphia type player, a gritty potential top six guy who does contribute offensively, is an excellent penalty killer, brings cup experience and just knows how to drive teams nuts. He can be a greasy player if he wants to. He can be an agitator for sure. Uh, Shaw, Jake Evans, a third round pick uh, for Shane Gossespierre would be my second trade. And the third trade, this mainly stems from comments like my buddy Talking Habs or Rick has made. If you're going to want a top end player like Shane Gossespierre, you're going to have to give a potential top end player going the other way. Philadelphia isn't going to want picks, they aren't going to want prospects that are going to play down the road. They're going to want somebody that can slot into their top six core right away or is going to contribute to their offense right away. They're pretty good defensively and with Carter Hart they have a pretty good goaltender. So they're going to be looking for somebody who can contribute to their offense right away. And a player that could do that is Jonathan Drouin. So Jonathan Drouin and a second round pick for Shane Goss's beer would be my last trade proposal. I'm not 100% sure if the Philadelphia Flyers would do that because Drouin doesn't have the upside Gossespierre has. Gossespierre has 65 points in a single season for a defenseman. He has a better contract with uh, just as good of term, so you'd have to throw something extra in. The Habs may have to pay two second round picks in Drouin if they wanted to get Gossespierre. Maybe even more. Philadelphia could agree with it, but that's a potential trade you could use to get Gossespierre too. So that's just the average hockey fan's opinion. And I would really, really like to see the Montreal Canadiens pull this trade off. He would be a huge addition to the defense core. And if they don't get Gosses Beer, I'd like to see him try and sign Edler in the offseason. That's a potential pickup, too. Just the average hockey fan's opinion, guys. So let me know what you think. Don't forget to ring the bell for my upcoming videos. I will have part four of my part five prospect series either coming out tonight or tomorrow at some point. And feel free to leave a comment on what you guys think. Do you guys think the Montreal Canadiens should go after Shane Gossespierre? Is Andrew Shaw and Paul Barron straight up for Shane Gossespierre too much? And what would you like to see go out if the Montreal Canadiens did acquire Shane Gossespierre? And would you like to see Nate Ratcliffe come with them too? Because I would love to see the Montreal Canadiens work some kind of package where they get Ratcliffe too. That would be so sick. Ratcliffe and Suzuki have amazing chemistry. If you watch them play together in Guelph, you understand what I'm talking about. So anyways, guys, that's the average hockey fan's opinion. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell for my upcoming videos. And of course, have a great day, folks. Scotty2Hockey, a.k.a. the average hockey fan, over and out.